Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I've made a Beluga. Technically just the body of the Beluga, but and it's actually a Beluga XL but I didn't have that logo so it doesn't say Beluga XL there. Uh, but it is a Beluga XL and for those who don't know the Beluga XL is made to transport very voluminous things but things that aren't so heavy. And one of those kinds of things is like a rocket stage. Uh, because without its propellant inside, the rocket stage is actually fairly light. But it's cumbersome to try to transport, and so Beluga or Beluga XL uh, transport those. So does the Dreamlifter, the 747 that was converted with a huge body like this. The Beluga XL is converted Airbus A330. And so I have to test it out. The wings are just procedural wings, the engines are stock engines converted to, in this case, GENX types. Uh, though the Beluga XL is supposed to have Trent 700s from Rolls-Royce, I didn't have those available, so I just used that. It's a stock landing gear that's been tweak scaled and those are procedural wings as well. Uh, so, just really one part for me, but it is somewhat complicated and it's going to take some testing. First of all, I have to make sure it can take off. Second of all, I need to make sure I can get something like this out of it. This is actually a little bit more limiting than I was hoping for. I don't know if they really have the floor here or whether it is some way of getting it. Because yeah, obviously stuff has to be at this level eventually, but because otherwise it can't get out. Uh, this is how they bring things out of it. Uh, not with the ramp though. Well, the way they do it is they have a lifter uh, thing that lifts stuff up and then plops it in. Uh, much like the way that baggage is put into planes regularly. I decided to do a ramp because I wanted to be able to roll it out. And well, I guess we'll start by seeing whether that's possible or not. Okay, well first of all let's make sure it's on the nose. The ramp doesn't quite reach the ground but we'll forgive it for now. Okay. So, getting inside here, I should have action grouped the docking port here, but anyway, undock. Well, it didn't explode immediately, so that's good. The, the colliders could have interfered with, with each other but, because it's such a tight fit. So, I'm glad it didn't explode. going to take off the brakes here. Okay, well, it not only didn't explode, it isn't caught. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. I was sort of afraid of this. Uh, it's sort of gotten caught here. Oh no, the the back wheels are now leaking. Ah <laughs> uh, no. Oh, uh, it could probably glitch its way through somehow. But okay, that's not ideal. Right. Well, anyway, um, hmm, I'm going to have to figure that out. But we'll set that aside for now. I'll do the flight test. So we've got a little bit of a problem. I don't think I can make that cart any... Well, I mean, I don't think we can create any more clearance because the top of the tank is definitely scraping the top, top of the airplane. So maybe there's some other method I could figure out. All right, well, I'm going to remove the payload for now because I want to test fly it without that but I'll leave that little adapter okay so the ramp animation actually maybe I can go with the deploy limit it, it goes like this like that but anyway uh, first, let's verify our numbers here. The width here is 60.6. I think it's supposed to be 60.3. The length is 61.3. That is actually supposed to be 63.1. So I'm somehow short. I think maybe the vertical stabilizer should be a little bit longer. I don't think that's a deal breaker right now. But yeah, I suspect that that's the problem there. And... The kerosene, if we dump all that, we see that the dry mass is 129.1 tons. 
the empty weight is supposed to be 127.5 so I'm about 1.6 tons overweight but the maximum takeoff weight is 227 tons and I'm only 200.39 because I have nothing inside so we'll try it like this so a little bit off on the numbers but we're close okay well let's just start the engines Get atmospheric autopilot on. It's an awkward shape. At least the body colliders seem to work well. They didn't collide with the payload. Oh, it got a hop there. That's not great. Well, I can rotate sort of scraping the bottom there it's not actually going up the altitude seems to be going up but that's because the runway itself is going up I'm pulling up as hard as I can Okay, well, okay, now it's got serious lift. Now we are going up. But it took the whole runway and we have nothing inside right now. So that's not great. As usual, um, we need higher speeds than we ought to in order to fly. I could give it some mighty lift. One of the problems is that the cent well, but we do rotate pretty well. The center of mass is pretty far ahead of the center of lift, and that's because the real center of pressure of this is forward because of the big forehead. So may giving the body some lift just so that we can move the center of lift where it probably ought to be might be helpful. But I also didn't use any flaps. I've configured the flaps. The procedural control surfaces are easy to do that with. Otherwise, it's handling pretty well. Let me just verify the cockpit here. We have a cockpit. I'm just using the Mark III, the shuttle cockpit, the stock shuttle cockpit. The eye point is really high up in this one, though. But yeah, we have the view here. No, I'm using some flap now, but probably needed spoilers. Now we're going really fast. I don't have enough of a flap setting. Okay, well, brakes. Okay, steering. Oh. Oh gosh. Uh, well, right. Well, anyway, we sort of ended up here. Um, right. Well, let me see how the takeoff is if I start off with some flaps, but I feel like I need more flaps. Probably need more spoilers as well, but that's something else to add. I just want to try and modify the takeoff. These already have flap, but yeah, let's just go, not 85, um, let's say 45 being max. Oh, it, it hopped, oh gosh. Oh, no, oh, oh, we lost one of those outer, okay, let's not do that. This is gonna need launch clamps too. Maybe I should use adjustable landing gear instead of these. I don't know if that'll solve the hopping problem or not. suspension or something needs to be tweaked uh, oh, oh I wrecked the other one now okay spring rating 
feel like less spring is what we were looking for here. More damp, less spring. Maybe that'll be good enough. It's got lots of max safe load there. Oh, no, that's not good enough. Uh, okay, launch clamps it is. I didn't put the special sort of beluga stripes and eye there and the tail thing because uh, frankly doing curved things on delivery is sort of hard. <laughs> curved things can be hard. It's easy to put a logo like this. It's hard to make curves. So I'll figure that out at some point if I feel like it. Okay. Okay, nose down. All right. So this time with flaps. Not that much flap. Just seeing if I can get off the ground before the end of the runway. But maybe you'll be down to body lift. It's really, really more about body drag than, than body lift. But rotation, rotation is not a problem. Okay, we are going up earlier. That's nice. Still, it's like more than 100 meters per second. Let's see if full flaps will eventually let me land a little bit better. feel like it's lovably silly, as opposed to Dreamlifter. I, I, I'm not too fond of Dreamlifter. Okay, get the flap in. There we go, the flaps are slowing us down now. Okay, maybe too much. Um, <laughs> that's, that's maybe too much flap. Flaps are basically acting like air brakes. Well, considering the speed we took off at, I can't decelerate too much. Well, okay, that level of flaps, whatever it is, is a lot. It then definitely acts like air brakes. Okay, I'm just gonna shut that down. And once we have contact, brakes. I must remember thrust reversers. Uh, I think we'll be all right in this case. I always forget about thrust reversers. Okay, so with flaps, it's a lot better. But what's the flap deflection right now? It's flap setting 2, whatever that is. Flap setting 3 is like total air brake. Alright, so anyway, that was the initial testing of the Beluga XL. And I'll leave it here. It's not going to be in the plane pack just yet. I haven't made wings or anything like that. So for now, I'll continue testing it and I'm going to see if I can use it for my roleplay purposes. I don't know if I'll get to that, but anyway, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.